melting and freezing matter everything around us that takes up space is called matter matter is made up of unimaginably tiny pieces called atoms when two or more atoms combine together they make molecules Atoms and molecules come together in enormous numbers to form the matter around us. Melting When a solid is turned into a liquid usually due to heating, then we call it melting. Ice can melt into water and chocolate in its solid form melts into a liquid. Solids, liquids and gases are the three states of matter. Matter can change from one state to another, such as from solid to liquid to gas. These changes in state is connected to the arrangement of atoms. Particles of a solid are tightly packed with one another. But when heat is provided, the particles start to vibrate and gain space within the atoms. Eventually, they move faster, gain kinetic energy, and lose attraction force between the particles. Then the particles gain the ability to flow. And this is how melting occurs. Now that we got to know about melting, we can easily find out where we can see melting. Let's observe an experiment to see how ice cubes are being melted to form water with the help of heating. Of kinetic energy is also decreased. 
and thus the amount of speed in which the particles are moving or vibrating decreases as well. Because of the decreasing of the particular movement, a molecular vibration, the intra-particular speed also decreases and the particle becomes uh, and the particles are then conducted and packed together in a small amount of space. Then the inter the interparticular attraction force between two particles increases and thus the particles have much stronger bonds and that is how a liquid is transferred or converted to a solid through the process of heating. Now we will be learning about the differences between physical and chemical change. But before that, we must first learn what is physical and chemical change. Physical change is a process in which properties of a substance can be changed by only affecting its physical properties. It is reversible and can go both forward and backward. They are temporary changes. A physical change occurs when an object changes its shape, size, position, texture, and state of matter. These changes can be both reversible and irreversible. Changes taking place in physical change can be brought about by heating or cooling. There are some properties of physical change which include change in size, shape, position, texture, state of matter, color, volume, and density, etc. Objects can change shape and texture when cut, broke, or crumpled. They can also change their position when force is applied. We can change the state of matter by adding or removing it energy from it. Now let's come to chemical change. Chemical change is a process in which properties of a substance can be changed by only effect by affecting both the physical properties of appearance and also the chemical components or composition. Chemical changes are usually irreversible and are permanent changes. A chemical change creates a new substance with different properties since it forms new substance, it can't retain the properties of its original form. There are some properties of physical change, chemical change which are the production of energy in the form of light, sound, heat, etc. and production of gas, permanent change in color, production of a precipitate, change in odor or test, change in density, change in temperature, etc. Now let's come to the most important part which is the differences between physical and chemical changes. The first difference is that physical changes are temporary and are generally reversible, whereas chemical changes are permanent and generally irreversible. No new substances are formed in physical change, whereas in chemical change, new substances are formed. The chemical composition remains the same and only the physical appearance of the substance changes in physical change. But in chemical change, both the physical appearance and the chemical composition of the substance changes. In, in, in physical change, individual properties are retained because the substances do not change its chemical compositions. Whereas in chemical changes, individual properties are not retained because in uniform substances possess different properties than the original substance. So now, physical changes are generally uh, do, physical change generally do not involve the production of energy, whereas in chemical change. It usually involves the production of energy, which can be in the forms of heat, light, sound, etc. As told before. So some examples of physical change might include melting, freezing, boiling, chopping, shredding, bending wear, breaking glass, holding paper, cutting hair, etc. And some examples of chemical change are rusting and rotting, combustion, burning, baking a cake, frying an egg, powering milk, digestion, fermentation, oxidation, gardening, etc. So here are the rest of our uh, lenses. No matter what you do to this ball of slime, whether you pull it, push it, twist it, or bend it, it's still just a ball of slime. So pushing, pulling, bending, and twisting are all just examples of physical change.
Well, as you watch the paper burn, what you're seeing happen is a chemical change. A new substance is being created. When you burn paper, the paper is turning into both ash, which you might see on the floor, and the smoke that you see going up in the air. And because paper is turning into these new substances, this is an example of a chemical change. Here's a Combustion. Combustion is a chemical reaction where energy is given out as heat. Combustion may or may not cause a flame. When a flame is created, combustion is then called burning. We burn huge amounts of fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas. When we burn anything, generally a fuel mixes with oxygen in a chemical reaction in order to produce energy, which is given out as heat or light. These types of reactions are called combustion reaction. In a combustion reaction, not only energy is produced, but the other products are generally thought to be wasted. When we burn coal, for example, carbon dioxide and energy is produced. Some combustion reactions are very fast such as mixing oxygen and hydrogen before setting them alight, the reaction occurs in split seconds. It is called an explosion rather than burning. Some materials are combustible while some are non-combustible. The materials which burn readily are known as combustible materials. For example, paper, wood, kerosene, diesel, petrol, straw, etc. The materials which do not burn readily are known as non-combustible materials, for example, glass, metal, ceramics, etc. Burning When a flame develops during combustion, it is called burning. During burning, heat is given out. Particles may arise from the substance as smoke and ash, and these may be left behind. It is a chemical reaction since it is irreversible. Now let's know about the difference between combustion and burning. Combustion. It involves the oxidation of fire. Burning. It is when something is set on fire. Combustion may or may not create a flame. Burning, it always creates a flame. Combustion forms a high amount of heat energy. Burning forms a low amount of heat energy. Combustion may or may not produce light energy, but burning always produces light energy. Combustion. All combustions are not burning, but all burnings are combustion. The Bunsen Burner A Bunsen burner is an apparatus used to light a fire in the lab. Methane combines with oxygen in the burning process to produce carbon dioxide and water. The parts of a Bunsen burner includes rubber tubing, gas inlet, gas tap, base. The base supports the burner, air hole, barrel. The barrel raises the flame to a suitable height. The collar is a metal piece. It can be rotated to open or close the air hole. Jet. The jet helps the gas to rush out from the gas supply and draw in the air. Using the Bunsen burner. At first, the collar needs to be turned to fully close the air hole. The gas tube needs to be properly connected to the Bunsen burner. Then, the fire is lit right above the chimney. 
The fire is called a luminous flame. It is orange in color and steady and silent. If the air hole is open, the flame which will be produced is a non-luminous flame. It is blue in color, forms a cone shape and makes a roaring sound. In the non-luminous flame, above the cone, the complete combustion of methane takes place. In the luminous flame, the carbon in the flame reacts with oxygen in the air and forms carbon dioxide. The non-luminous flame has an outer cone, which is invisible, and an inner cone, which is blue in color. Which flame is hotter? To see which flame is hotter, a simple experiment can be conducted. A wire gauze can be placed on top of the fire. Through this, we can see that the non-luminous flame is much hotter than the luminous flame. This is because when the air hole is open, it allows all of the oxygen to mix with carbon in the non-luminous flame. How do they sound like? The luminous flame sounds like this. This shows that it's silent. Now, for the non-luminous flame. This is the reason why the non-luminous flame is sometimes called the roaring blue flame.